Kim, thank you so much for inviting me today. Your studio is so much fun and so is your work, but I wanna know how all of this got started. Were you always an artist? After my kids started school, we have four kids, and after they started in school, I went back to school. So I went to IPFW and got a degree in fine arts at, at school going part-time. So that started me, I graduated in 99, and then I started doing art fairs right after that and just kept going. So when did you start really dabbling in clay? I did it in high school and really loved clay. And then when I took, was going uh, to college and decided to go into the arts, I was thinking more of a commercial art. And at the time I started, uh, the college had the commercial art in with fine arts. Mm. So that got me, you have to take so many classes. Ceramic was one of them and it just renewed that love of clay again and the feel of the clay and it, it, it just seemed like the natural thing to go into then. Were you naturally good at it? I don't know. I remember in high school making things and the teacher even wanted to keep one of my pieces. Mm. So maybe so. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you don't think of it that way. You always have parents that are just, well, you can't make money at this, so you're going to have to find something else to do. <laughs> right. So you don't even entertain the fact that maybe that's what you want to do with your life. So. How scary was it after raising four kids, after having, you know, your husband's voice in your ear saying, maybe you should, you know, have a, a regularly paying job. How scary was it to say, no, I'm going to take this leap and I'm going to study art and then I'm going to make a living doing it. If you know me, you'd know it's not scary. <laughs> it's just, you know, you just have to do what you have to do. Yes. And, and my view is if I'm happy, everybody else is going to be happy around me. Mm -hmm. If I'm not happy, then they're not going to be happy either. So I've never been one to really, I, if you want it to work, you're going to make it work. I That's love that. The attitude. So speaking of happiness, I think that that comes through so clearly in your work. Your pieces are so joyful. How do you describe your aesthetic? I think that's it. It's just colorful, puts a smile on your face. Um, none of them have, you know, like some artists, um, some of their, they, it's got to be heavy and it's got to be real thought provoking. To me, art should be fun. It should be something that you just appreciate, you look at, and it brings a smile to your face. So to me, it's it, I don't have to have a lot of thought into it. I just want to create fun pieces that people relate to. If you like it, great. If you don't, that's fine too. You know, it's what I enjoy doing, and I hope somebody seeing it will enjoy it as much as I do. Let's talk specifically about your process. Um, so to make one of these figures, and there are so many different ones, I love them. I'm, you have different professions, you have Santa Clauses, you have bunnies, I mean, just you name it. But how do you get from a chunk of clay, um, a 50 pound block of clay to one of these pieces? To start off, I'll say I used to be a functional potter. So I used to, when I graduated from college, it's okay, what can I make that will sell? So mm -hmm. it's the plates and the bowls and the cups. And about um, four or five years ago, I'm a member of the Orchard Gallery and we always do a March theme. And our theme was Art Becomes Her. So I'm thinking, okay, what can I do that will be part of that. So I made the standing women at that time, I call them my arty women. And <laughs> I started there and I just loved it so much. And I thought, I am not making another plate or a bowl, that's it. So it started with those people and the pieces, the actual body of the piece is from slab construction. So it's rolled out and then stamped with different stamps. And then I have to make the head and the hands, things like that are sculpted. So I just use tools in my hands and make 
all the little appendages and the hair is extruded. So the, the inspiration for sort of your current line, if you will, was Art Becomes Her. Right. And, and from that, you now make, like I said, all kinds of different figures. Do right. you have a favorite? I think the people are, the, are my favorite, and women. I, I do some men, like some chefs and, and different things, um, but I guess being a woman, I just relate to that more, and I just enjoy making the women more than any of them. I've started to make a rabbit or a hare now that hangs, and I'm really having fun. I've only done four of them. so. As this winter comes along, the show season has slowed down, I will now start making a lot more of those and, and see how those go. They're just fun, a nice change, but probably I, the women the most. I love the women. I love all of the texture, and I love their boobs. Oh, I know. Am I, I don't think I'm allowed to say that on PBS, maybe. We'll see. Um, but they, almost all of them, have boobs. That's and right. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah, they do, and everybody loves them that comes into the the uh, booth or whatever. Oh, I just love their boobies. Yeah. And they just go crazy, <laughs> and to me it was just, it's just part of them. I, I don't even think about it when I do it. Occasionally I'll forget to put them on, but you know, there's a hey. lot of very flat-chested <laughs> women too. That's so true. it all works. I love it. Tell me where your inspiration for each individual woman or figure comes from? A lot of times it's from, again, being at the Orchard Gallery and having that themed exhibit. Mm. And so whatever the theme is, that's what I kind of work on for the next um, summer shows. So we did feathers, fins, and fur. So <laughs> I did a lot of women with feathers and, you know, that's some of the birds came out of that. Um, so yeah, it just, those themes just help me because you want to create a nice body of work for that show. Mm -hmm. And then that body of work is what you take out to the fairs and it begins. Then when I'm doing the art fairs, there's just certain things you have to have. You've got to have the lady with the cats, the cat lovers. <laughs> right. They, they will buy those like crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, this time of year, the angels. And so you do, you know, the ones with wings and halos. So it just depends. And then I do a lot of special orders. So people will see the chef hanging and then they'll think, oh, do you do a doctor? Do you do a lawyer? And sure, I can do it if yes. you want me to. So yeah. Let's talk about the business a little bit. Does knowing that you intend to sell these pieces take some of the joy out of it? Does the, does the business side um, detract from the Not joy. at all. I oh, think good. it's just the opposite. When I sell one, I'm excited because now I have room to make a new one. <laughs> you know, you can only have so many things. Mm -hmm. So as long as they keep selling, it just gets me inspired because now I get to, to keep going. Mm -hmm. And each one's different. None of them are cookie cutter because they're all made individually. So when you make the next one, it just changes it a little bit and it looks different than the last one, even though it might be the same theme. Mm -hmm. It's so, yeah, every time I sell one, it's like, oh, yay, I get to, <laughs> you know, then it gives you that permission to keep going. Right. So. I'm sure it depends on the size, but in general, how long from start to finish does it take to create one of your pieces? A lot of people ask that question. Uh, it, I work by kiln load, so I have a seven cubic foot kiln. Okay. And I usually, I can fire it with one thing in, but it seems silly, mm -hmm. so I hardly ever do. So I work by kiln load, and it will take me a couple months to completely make the pieces, have them dry, you bisque fire them, then they have to be uh, dipped in a black wash, wiped off, painted, then fired again. So it will take a couple months so whenever I get a special order, I always say it will be at least two months before I'd have it ready because I'm not gonna just do that one piece. Sure. And so, yeah, a couple months. What is the hardest part of the process? I don't know if it's the hardest part, but the part I don't enjoy the most is probably the black wash because after you dip, then you have to wipe it off. 
but it isn't just wiping. You have all those a, uh, eyes and mouth, and so you're taking a little brush and trying to get rid of some of that black mm -hmm. um, because you can only have so much on there. So that's probably my least favorite part to do. Building them is my favorite. Mm. And then the black wash is least. The painting is okay. Again, I enjoy the color on them, but it's the creating of the piece that's my favorite. You told me that you just shipped a piece to Australia, which blows my mind. How gratifying is it to know that your work lives not just all over the country, but all over the world? I think the first few times you do it, it is. It's very exciting and oh boy, yeah. but then it just becomes like shipping it to Michigan or <laughs> shipping it out to California. Right. It's just you're happy that people appreciate what you're doing yes. and that makes you feel good. So no matter where they're from, you're just happy to that somebody's you know, buying it and enjoy having it, so. <laughs> Kim, I love your work. It, Like I said, uh, it's just joyful. I just look at every piece and they make me happy. Oh, so thank you. thank you for sitting down with me today thank and you. best of luck in the future. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Arts in Focus on PBS Fort Wayne is funded in part by the Our Foundation, and the Community Foundation of Greater Fort Wayne.